Len, you call this the holy grail of education funding. Why? Because for a couple of decades, the Democrats and their allies in education and uh, really the uh, advocates for children's issues have been trying to find a way to get more money into education so that, in fact, our education system can have enough resources uh, to support the kinds of goals that we want to have. Uh, there's been a lot of debates about this, uh, and people have said, well, it's not a question of money, it's really a question of priorities. But I think the student success uh, process, the legislative committee that spent 16 months, went all across the state and found out that, no, we really need money. So the bill that was passed was an enormous step forward. Right. The Student Success Committee heard all sorts of things during their statewide tour, classroom disruptions, which we've talked so much exactly. about, yeah. large class sizes, mental health supports, and this bill will really go to address those issues. Exactly. So the legislators who went around the state deserve a lot of credit. Then the legislators who run the two revenue committees, that's uh, uh, that's Mark Haas, a state senator for, from Portland, and Nancy Nathanson from Eugene, really took, rolled up their sleeves and said, what kind of a tax measure will hit, get enough money that won't anger so many business people, but it'll still get passed. Mm -hmm. So that's why we have this $2 billion money. Plus we have some accountability factors so that the local school districts have to be accountable for the money. We fund some of the things that Oregonians know they want, like Measure 98, vocational education. And we have a variety of uh, measures that cut down some of our taxes. So it's a very big bill, a once in a lifetime opportunity for the Democrats to kind of get something really passed that they've been trying to do for several decades. Why did the Dems, supermajority, give up anything at all, the vaccine exemption and the gun control bill? Well, we'll see. You know, we're kind of learning a little bit more about it as each one of the legislators who care about those bi those bills um, kind of talk about the process. I've got to say that I think that the Democrats had a stronger hand than the Republicans. Mm -hmm. The Republicans got, I think, very little, uh, but they got something for their base. But I think at the at the base of it, what it was, was Senator um, Courtney is an institutionalist. I think he didn't want to break any arms and elbows to get the Republicans back in because he knew that if he did that, he would seriously hurt the institution of the Oregon Senate and that blow up might come up again and again and again before the end of the session. So I think the Democrats had a hard, a tough hand, a good hand. The, they may not have had all the votes they needed for the vaccine bill uh, and for the, uh, for the gun control bill, but really I think the issue was whether or not they wanted to preserve good, their not good enough feelings so they could work through the rest of the session, get some other key priorities done without a constant fight. Without a huge war. Exactly. All right, Len, so much great insight as always. Thank you so much. You're right. Back to you.